Well, George Galloway, MP, is here. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, are you going to be any more conscientious representing the people of Bradford than you were in Bethnal Green? Oh, don't start by insulting me now. Let's not go well, off on true. a Come on. Let's not now, get off on a There's a more serious a point here because start. you only attended 8% of votes during yeah. your time there. Well, I've, as I've explained to you and others many times before, what? in the Commons you can only vote for the government's motion or the Leader of the Opposition's amendment and I seldom wished to vote for either in that five years. My attendance in Parliament was daily. My attendance in votes depended on what the issue under discussion was. But you know what, Jeremy? I won. You're going to have to get used to that. Oh, I won a great victory. I've already congratulated you. Well, yes, it. but not sincerely, evidently. No, uh, quite sincerely. No, no, it is, no, no I said it was sincerely. one of the most <clears throat> epic yeah. victories well, in well, recent electoral <coughs> maybe history. Maybe the best That's answer I can give you then is, evidently the people of Bradford West think so, because they voted for me in overwhelming number. Well, I'm quite struck by the phrase that you used. We heard it there, the Bradford Spring. Mm. It just struck me as an odd form of words for a man who described President Assad's Syria as the last castle of Arab dignity. Please don't think that I'm on trial in front of you, Jeremy. You're no, not fit to be my judge. The I, people I'm of not Bradford judging you. West, I'm just thinking it's people, a very odd form of words. Uh, well, evidently the people of Bradford West, who frankly matter to me far more than you do, uh, are the judge of what I say and what I do. And they judged in a democratic election, 18,000 of them, but, to put their ex next to my name. So they, they evidently but, were not put off by your but, misrepresentations of my views you, about Syria. In you, fact, did, you did, I've seen the email, fact, you did describe in fact, Assad Syria as the last castle of did, Arab dignity. I did in 2005 right. and... 2010 I, in fact. No, it wasn't in 2010. It was the no. 14th of August 2010. Well, uh, my speech in Syria was in 2005. No, we're, not talk we're talking about an email, not your speech when you talked about what well, a good chap Assad let me, was. I'm let me, about the email you let sent. Me tell, well, that was at the time he was sleeping in Buckingham Palace in the Queen's uh, the spare bedroom. He wasn't sp sleeping in Buckingham Palace <coughs> in August he 2010. Was. <coughs> the Syrian people are the last castle of Arab right. dignity. They are the last castle of resistance to Israeli occupation and to imperialist intrigue in you, the area. But I don't think that was an issue in the Bradford West by-election. But why did, you, why did you talk about the, the Bradford Spring? This. Please accept that a big uprising of people, peaceful, democratic uprising, unknown, unnoticed by you, you didn't send anyone there, the mm. London media didn't send anyone there, and mm. yet it happened, has to be characterized as something new in British politics. They were not voting on my views about Syria, neither mm. on my views about uh, how to vote in House of Commons uh, uh, divisions, which are largely meaningless to most of them, which is what this discussion really should be about. We're, we're going to get on to that. I just want to get one other point with you, which was this. Why did you say God knows who is a Muslim and he knows who is not? I, George Galloway, don't drink alcohol. I never have. I, George Galloway, have fought for Muslims at home and abroad all, all of my life. Now, why, why was wouldn't it... wouldn't I say that? Well, it, I'm just interested as to why you found it necessary to say it. Because the Labour candidate was going around campaigning on the twin bases that he was a Pakistani and a Muslim. <laughs> So I believed that that playing, shameless playing, of ethnicity as an electoral card was something that needed what? to be answered. And ordinarily, of course, if it were me that were being accused of it, you'd be the sternest critic. Well, people I have, shouldn't vote for I've people. never had anyone ask for my vote by telling me how much they drink, that's all. I was well, just curious. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't drink, and he does. All right, let's talk, uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about what this victory uh, for George Galloway. It is, a, it is a sensational result. Let's talk about what it represents. Ed Miliband was talking to you about how you, your party needs to listen. Why didn't you realise that before? I think he's always spoken about that. It was a sensational result and I think, to be, to be honest, Jeremy, you do a disservice to people of Bradford mm. West by focusing on George, does George drink, what George said about us. The people, I'm you know, in a, in, what he chose to say. in a democracy, you have to listen when people mm. vote in those numbers. And clearly the people of Bradford West, they, they, they were trying to get a message through to the political establishment. And I think the underlying message, it's not just issues about 
um, Afghanistan, although whether you live in Bradford or Tunbridge Wells, you wonder what on earth we're still doing in Afghanistan 10 years after the beginning. There is an issue though about the huge economic gap between North and South, and it's a mistake to write off Bradford West, as some people do. We need to listen to that but, message. Well, South, but at a broader level, what is going on, do you think, in people's attitudes to the mainstream parties? Well, they're falling away from them. I mean, we've got consistently lower attendances. The attempts of uh, both the Tories and Labour to launch themselves in some sense as mass membership parties has largely been a failure. And I think that the kind of tit-for-tat business of politics, you know, the Liberals came into the last election on the face of it with an honest desire to try and change that and to try well, and introduce a more proportion. They fooled here. They fooled you, obviously. <laughs> Well, you know, it fooled, I, yes, it fooled me, and in a sense, I didn't think that they'd be so feeble when it got to the yeah, negotiating well, procedure. I thought as a, a, a party that understood how proportional government worked, they might have been prepared some to sit down a bit longer. Some of us could have told you the point is it's over for the Lib Dems, but you know, I must say this, that every time there's a sensational by-election, going all the way back to Eric Lubbock and Orpington, people say this is the end of politics as we know it, but funnily no. enough... No the one's, no one's saying it's the end of itself. politics. But have you, uh, do you notice it in the Conservative Party as well? Yeah, I think so. I mean, this has been a wake-up call, I think, for all the political parties. And it may well be that a future by-election, even in this Parliament, that the Conservatives may have big problems. Mm. And I think part of the issue, actually, is the way we do politics. Everything is focused on the marginal seats. So what happened in Bradford, what was interesting was, I don't think Labour had any idea of any data about what the, where the voting preferences were. So that come the close of polls, they'd sort of assume, oh, we, we've won again like we've won for the last 40 years. And that's why it was such a shock, I think, to the Labour Party. So uh, did uh, Tory uh, polling predict that George Galloway was going to win? No, no, it didn't. But, no. but, but again, you as were I say, all as, caught as, on no, the no, uh, We all were. And sorry, I'm not making, I'm, I'm not trying to make an anti-Labour point. I'm making a point that the whole focus now of politics is on the 80 to 100 marginal seats where everything matters, all the resource mm -hmm. goes in. And I think uh, that's uh, true. The, the relatively small that armies of, of uh, man that. members that all the parties well, what's now your have solution? are working in that. What's your solution? I don't think there are easy solutions to it. And uh, the reality, I'm afraid, is, uh, and this is one of the difficulties, I think that there was great excitement when the coalition came in two years ago about a new fresh politics. No, there was Well, uh, in fact, I think <laughs> from, from some people there was, George. Uh, but, 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 I but, detected none <laughs> of that, <laughs> I must say. <laughs> well, I, I was perhaps still in the House of House at the time. But uh, I think, I think You need to get out more. Part, part, part of the problem, uh, I think, now is that uh, essentially we have got probably diminished living standards in this country yeah. for the next decade. And it is going to be incredibly difficult. No government of whatever stripe is going to be popular and no opposition is going to be trusted, not least because we may well be in a situation rather like the 1960s and 70s where we will be chopping and changing at each and every election going forward. And that, may, I think is, that is going to be the main problem we're going to face. Isn't the point, uh, isn't the point about Bradford, you know, George was campaigning, when you were campaigning you were saying there's, there's this Bradry system uh, among uh, certain Urdu people in, in the Labour Party in Bradford. There's a system essentially of patronage. It's good old Tammany style politics. And in a way there's a Bradry system operating at a national level as well. The political class offers sinecures. Yeah. In a way, it's viewed as a closed loop. It doesn't matter. George it's, Galloway, it's, it's, it's a parallel. George Galloway. It, it's a parallel universe, Jeremy. I mean, Mark is a, a gentleman and an expensively educated one. But That's frankly, free, actually. I frankly, was a boy, frankly, he, he might be from Mars to the streets of Manningham. There, youth unemployment has risen 40 percent in 12 weeks and tripled in a year. The mass of the people are in absolute poverty in British terms not relative to other countries in the world, but in British terms, mass poverty. And these politicians, not Diane, but the political leaders speak in a different language to them and about mm. different things well, to a, them. It's a rather beautiful inverted world, isn't it, Bradford, George? You've got an enormous hole in the middle of your city Literally. where there's a Westfield meant to be, unlike the enormous Westfield but on yeah. Stratford the, Marshes the, and the catering to the Olympics. These are parts of the country yeah. that have not, never recovered from the deindustrialization of the Thatcher years, That's right. and now the coalition is slashing public sector spending. No wonder there's no hope. You see, the interesting thing about George Galloway, what, 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 whatever, even his critics will acknowledge that George Galloway gave people who voted for him something to hope for. It, let's hope. Yeah. Well, I feel, I, I'm but, but afraid I think rather misguidedly. I mean, it seems, well, it's in George's problem and respect's problem in general, and they're, they're in a coalition with some rather unlikely fellow travellers who don't necessarily even want to travel with George. Well, it sounds like you know, the Dems and the Tories. Namely the SWP, but all of these groups, <laughs> to some extent, 
you know, demand representation and represent a part of the vote. And we don't have an electoral system that is capable of reflecting that level of diversity. Yeah. And all due respect, no pun intended to George, but what he had in Bradford was a synergy between the conditions he describes, the economic and social yeah. conditions, and a particular local disaffection on two issues, British foreign policy, because of the ethnicity of the vote, and no. a disaffection with the local no, Labour Party. No, first of all, it's not and just, that's it's not just Muslims office. that think we should come out of Afghanistan. It's not just Muslims well, it, who no. were These very were the me, disillusioned uh, by the Iraq Professor War. Self, uh, of course, oh, is a, Self, a, a distinguished forgot. figure of academia, so yeah, you'll I want to hear this. The University Ward of Bradford West, which as the name suggests, is as plural ethnically and uh, in other senses as it can be, I want 85% of that vote. And I want it because your friends in the Liberal Democrats absolutely betrayed the university community and the student community who from this September will be paying £9,000 a year in tuition fees. That was not a Muslim issue. That was a young person's yeah. issue. Yeah, but like, there I was mean, a how poverty are you going to also, reverse it's also, that it's also I'm not going trust. to reverse it, but I'm going to trust. speak for them. Yes. I'm going to speak out, and I, as has happened already, I am heard when I speak. People are paying attention to what I'm saying because of this result. Yes, but essentially you'll be sideswiping actual parliamentary politics. You're a lone MP in oh, right. sense. Okay, so let's, yes. let's leave that. that okay. that's part, but that question that, that, that George Galloway raises of how the Liberal Democrats behaved in making a very, very public pledge, which on getting into for the first sniff of power for decades, they immediately renege upon. I couldn't that agree more. That has destroyed a tremendous amount of trust very in mainstream politics. Very disillusioned. Very disillusioned. Absolutely. It's people. a political very seppuku. I mean, you, you, but you, know. you backed them, didn't you? He bought well, it. I, I voted for gullible him. I wouldn't say I backed Self. for them. Gullible uh, Professor <laughs> Self. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Uh, no, Sad, but Actually, the Liberals, well, the Liberals well, are headed for the I going to vote for? That's the word on the street. They really are headed well, for possibly. the Well, possibly. We'll, yeah. we'll have to wait and see. But is this, uh, I wonder if this sort of behaviour is the consequence of coalition. What happens when you have yes. coalition governments? No, I, I think there is an element of that. We're not used to coalitions in this country. The notion that after an election that essentially a coalition agreement is reached, mm. which is like a sort of tablet of stone compared to the manifestos that were put to the public at large. And, th and that is a problem. And I, and I think it is going to cause a certain amount of disillusionment. There is this whole sense, as you say, that there's no legitimate mandate for quite a lot of, of what is going on. Um, but a lot of that, of course, again, it's driven by the economic situation, which, again, none of the political parties, Labour, Liberal or the Conservatives, levelled with the public before well, the last election about how serious it was. We were, we were dancing on the edge of a pin saying, well, it's all, fair, all about £6 million of the difference between Armageddon and, uh, and Sunnet Uplands. And that, that I mean, there, was, there were some of us who did actually say at the time, listen, this is not the way to, to go about it. But, but it's also, sense we drew the, a line the, after the, the disillusion has been, the, well, not dis, perhaps not disillusion, but, but the fact that the, the voter has become more promiscuous, more volatile, more changeable, as something that's been going on for 40 or 50 years, it is. isn't it? Well, the irony probably is, is funnily enough, in the next election, um, there's been this dim diminution in the vote for the main two main parties, Conservative and Labour Party. Probably it will actually go up slightly in the next general election because of a, the collapse what well, one assumes to a certain extent, the, of the, 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 the Liberal Democrat vote going forward. But I don't disagree with, with, with what you're saying. And I think, in, uh, you know, the, the clip earlier on was very, very interesting because actually what you have is a lot of small, single issue pro protest groups who basically are very targeted and they deliver. And the feeling is the political class just uh, makes a lot of promises every time, and partly because of global factors uh, and the well, power of international you business. You can also it's take your concerns elsewhere, can't you? You can take your concerns to a, to a charity, to, you can tweet, you can... You, can yeah, you saw that, uh, that 38 degrees. If they really have a million members, that's hundreds of thousands more than any of the political yeah. parties here. Yes, but hang on have. a minute. The, the Stop the War Coalition moved millions of people in the run-up to the Iraq War. Uh, people are in CND, they're in but, all sorts but of George, things. You know they no well longer trust parties. But it's not yes, one not or the other. It is not single issue pressure groups or political parties. None, they work together. None That's of this actually feeds into legislation. You, know, you can be as mean as you like about the Lib Dems, and the reality of it is that actually if you're a Lib Dem party member, in theory, you have a say in what goes into the manifesto and becomes. So that's why the Lib Dem betrayal looks so bad. On the other hand, if you're a member of the Tory party, you can suddenly wake up to find your, a government introducing a piece of legislation
organization like the reorganization of the national health that you had no part in yeah, but they and also, you didn't even necessarily They also cut the top for. rate of tax and yeah. Tories are very happy about that. So, so you know, hey. the actual disconnect between being a member of the Tory party and a Tory government is, you know, necessarily could be perceived well, as greater. Well, but as you say, we, we've no, been a, we were a less democratic party in that sense, mm -hmm. in, in the sense that we've always taken the view that we no, get on, let the, we, but, but we want to get into government to and do then, then let the team get on to, to do it. it. Unless you want everyone to disappear in this kind of gloop of civic mindedness and vague internet petitions, what you want is people to be keyed into the business of making legislation, to feel that they it's have a stake well, with legislation. It's not fair to say the Tories haven't delivered for Tory voters cutting tax, oh. cutting the public sector, putting up the price of pasties. Of course they've delivered for key Tory voters. No, but, but Dan, to be serious, I mean, I, I there, mean there is serious. A, there's actually a longer, this is a Tory there's a longer term government. issue, I think, about a Tory -led government. Kept in power the, by the Liberal Democrats. There's Indeed. A, there's a longer term issue, I think, about whether we have a. a, a distinction between the executive on the one hand and legislative. And members of parliament are legislators to be voting right. on the, not, not being whipped through in quite the same way. Now, that's a fair way ahead, I let's, suspect. Let's have, let George Galloway have the last word. Go on. Well, oh, I no. think Will's actually on to the real point that there's a paradigm shift, that the system has failed, that the Tweedledee, Tweedledum, Tweedledee and a half, if a, if a backside could have three cheeks, they're <laughs> sitting uh, in the House of Commons a number uh, of across each other <laughs> in <laughs> fake opposition. But they all stand for the same things. Neoliberal economics, cuts in public expenditure, and war abroad. That paradigm has to be smashed open. All right. I, I hope that that started on Thursday. Okay, thank you all very much. Thank you. Now, it always used to be said that whatever you thought of individuals,